Monoclonal antibodies are made from mouse lymphocytes and they have the potential to treat diseases like cancer. Today we're looking at how they're made and all of their uses. Make the most of this video and your revision time with my study along workbook. It's got loads of tasks to complete while you watch and exam questions to test what you've learnt. The link is in the description below or head over to emmatheteachy.com. In a previous video, we covered how antibodies work. These are proteins made by white blood cells that can attach to antigens. Antigens are proteins often found on the surfaces of cells. Today, we're looking at how large amounts of antibodies can be made in the lab. These are monoclonal antibodies. In the first stage, a mouse is stimulated so that its white blood cells make antibodies for a particular antigen. As you're studying biology only or triple, you need to learn that these white blood cells are called lymphocytes. These lymphocytes are then combined with a particular type of tumor cell. This makes a new cell called a hybridoma. Hybridoma cells have the properties of both cell types. It can produce antibodies like a lymphocyte and it can divide rapidly like a tumor cell. Single hybridoma cells are then cloned to produce many identical cells. These can all divide rapidly to produce the same antibody. A large amount of the monoclonal antibodies can then be collected and purified for use. The uses of monoclonal antibodies are all possible because the antibodies will only bind to one specific type of antigen which allows it to target specific cells in the body or chemicals like hormones. You need to be able to describe some of the uses of monoclonal antibodies and you can also expect an application question with this topic to explain how the monoclonal antibodies work. There are four to learn. The first is pregnancy tests. A specific hormone is made during the early stages of pregnancy and if it's present, monoclonal antibodies or MABs will bind to it and cause a colour change to indicate pregnancy, like this. They can also be bound to a fluorescent dye, and they're then used in research to locate or identify specific molecules in a cell or the whole cells themselves. Monoclonal antibodies can also be used to detect diseases. This can be done by binding to the pathogen's antigens, like this. They can also bind to other chemicals or hormones in the blood that are only produced in high levels if a person has a disease. And finally, they can be used to treat some diseases like cancer. In this case, a substance such as a toxic drug, a radioactive substance, or a chemical that stops the growth of the cells can all be attached to the monoclonal antibody. When it then binds to the tumor cell's antigens, it delivers the substance to the cell. Monoclonal antibodies deliver substances to disease cells without damaging the body's healthy cells. This is a huge advantage of monoclonal antibodies. Conventional drugs are carried all over the body and are much harder to target to specific cells or tissues, resulting in damage to healthy cells. Targeting cells based on their antigens allows a much more specific response. There is one big disadvantage to monoclonal antibodies. Because they were made using mouse lymphocytes, monoclonal antibodies have created more side effects than expected. Because of this, they're not yet as widely used as hoped when they were first developed. Researchers are continuing to improve the production of monoclonal antibodies to try and reduce the side effects and doctors are also able to anticipate and treat side effects, so it's hoped that they will be more widely used in the future. Let's test what you've understood. Pause the video and try these quick questions in your head or in your study along workbook, and then press play to go over the answers. 1. Which two cells are used to create a hybridoma cell? This is a lymphocyte and a tumor cell. 2. What is the main advantage of monoclonal antibodies over conventional drugs? Well, monoclonal antibodies are specific to one antigen, so they can target specific cells 
tissues or chemicals in the body without damaging healthy cells. Whereas conventional drugs are not as specific and can harm healthy cells as a result. Three, why are monoclonal antibodies not as widely used as first hoped? They have had more side effects than initially anticipated. Okay, how did you do on the questions? Somehow I forgot to film the outro for this one. Sorry about that, but instead here's a nice picture of a cat. Up next is plant diseases, and if you like this video or the cat, then please subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching, bye!